Thank you. Measure 110 was recently rolled back by the Oregon legislature. It was replaced with an ambitious new system that recriminalizes possession of hard drugs, but also encourages drug users to get into treatment to avoid jail time. What steps should the Multnomah County DA take to ensure this revamped system is a success? Mr. Vasquez. Again, this is another point where you need to have a DA that you can trust, that has experience in delivering. Um, you know, when we look at this issue, what, when we talk about trust, you know, Mike Schmidt was the cheerleader for Measure 110 decriminalization. He was out front uh, on that issue. I clearly saw that that was wrong and not good for our community. However, he continued to push that forward year after year and literally flip-flopped at the last minute when our community came forward with massive polls saying, hey, we need to do something better. And what we saw, in fact, was that he took $30,000 from the Drug Policy Alliance just a few days ago. How can we have trust that he will deliver? I will rebuild di diversion courts. I will help build the deflection we need and create the support networks to help get individuals into treatment. And finally, and first and foremost, what I will do is I will be the one that will build the teams necessary to crush the cartels, to create a healthy environment so those suffering from substance abuse disorder can feel free to walk in our community without having someone trying to hand them fentanyl all the time. Thank you, Mr. Schmidt. Yeah, well, it's good that Mr. Vasquez supports the law change that I help legislators uh, write and to fix Measure 110. Uh, look, what we saw, I supported Measure 110 like 75% of Multnomah County voters. Uh, I think a lot of us have seen people struggle with addiction, how hard that is. And we also know that what people who are addicted need is access to health care and treatment. So like 75% of the community, I voted for that. But what we saw was it wasn't working. We saw open drug use on our streets and we saw that the treatment resources that we needed weren't coming online fast enough. Uh, so that's when I got to work. I put out a proposal last summer working with legislators and then in the short session we rolled up our sleeves and we developed this continuum in 4002 which starts with deflection and gives police officers a new tool where they can actually come up to someone and say, hey, you're not allowed to possess drugs, but if you want, instead of going to jail and prosecution, you can go to treatment. I think that's gonna have a major impact and right now we're spending all of our time uh, getting ready to set up that deflection program on September 1st. Thank you, and a quick follow-up. What would you do if there aren't adequate treatment options in place? Would you consider charging and possibly jailing someone for minor drug possession? I will, always, I will always first and foremost push to see individuals into treatment and that will be my first approach always. If there's times where someone needs to be sobered up in a treatment readiness storm, which I will help develop with the sheriff, that would be an option, but it would be a very short and then a transition into outpatient treatment options. Mr. Schmidt? Jailing people with no options for treatment uh, doesn't make sense. Uh, it's not gonna help the addiction problem. We need to use that leverage to help people choose to go into treatment, like we do in our specialty courts and different drug courts that we've started since I've been the district attorney. Thank you. All right, we're gonna continue with treatment here. The next question, do you support mandatory drug treatment for people convicted of committing crimes? And if so, to what extent, Mr. Schmidt? Uh, short answer is yes, uh, and we do this already. Uh, when people are convicted of committing crimes, frequently if drugs are a part of the issue that drove them to uh, commit those crimes, uh, you'll see part of their sentencing package will be negotiated treatment. It can be in a specialty court, it can be in our MCJRP program, our Multnomah County Justice Reinvestment Program, but frequently treatment is a part of that. Uh, the wraparound specialty courts do a fantastic job. They are evidence-based, they are research tested. We know that they work, recidivism rates are lower for people that go through treatment courts than they go through the traditional system. So investing in those are crucial to our uh, community's recovery. But mandating that people do treatment when they have, when their addiction has led to them committing crimes in our community is absolutely something I support. Thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Same question about supporting mandatory drug treatment for convicted criminals. The short answer is yes. And I'm someone that actually delivers that. I wanna tell you about a story in 2019. I prosecuted an individual by the name of Marcus Gunther uh, for doing graffiti crimes. He came forward and told me that he also had a substance abuse issue. I did help ensure that he went to prison. However, I made sure that he got treatment while in prison and had a full probationary package on the back end so that he would have the support when he got out of prison. I'm proud to say that he reached out to me recently and told me how, while he hated me in 2019 for doing that, 
that I had saved his life. I had turned it around. He recently bought a home. He got married. And it really is the reason that drives me forward knowing that I am out there doing the real work to help individuals. And I believe and know that as a district attorney, this is what I will carry forward and deliver to our community.